I, I normally work with photography, but in that I always play with this kind of frustration between the senses. And in the map that I made here, and in the sound work, and the dance cards, which are available for each person who kind of listens to um, the sound work for them to take away, I've been playing with this. The piece of work is called Save the Last Dance for Me, and this came out of research that I did in Colombia and in um, Cuba and in Scotland, where I became interested in the way in which um, dances become associated with particular sort of nationalistic strategies at different times. Um, I grew up dancing in Kaylee as my kind of physical education class. So although I'm half um, Mauritian Chinese and half Scottish, I know all the, the gay gods and National White Sergeant all these <laughs> dancing. Um, I started becoming interested in the way we could look at translations and movements between different cultures, different countries at different points, but through the prism of a dance. And um, the dance that I kind of <coughs> fascinated by is the rumba. What I did was I made a, a map through kind of conversations with various participants. These were professional dancers, amateur dancers, and um, people who'd gone over to Cuba um, for dance holidays. I became interested in the way in which dance um, has been affected by globalization, kind of commodification as well, and the way in which in Cuba, the rumba post-revolution um, became kind of lauded as the Cuban dance, mainly because it fitted in with ideas of sort of Afro-Cuban um, and the emphasis on the workers as well. In my research through uh, going to, to various kind of dance classes throughout London, um, I started finding out about these, these kind of characters associated with the rumba. And this map is a kind of homage to Monsieur Pierre, who was this um, amazing character who in the 1940s, um, having gone from Paris to London, went from London to Cuba and realised that the rumba that had been danced in Europe actually wasn't the kind of Cuban rumba and had brought that back, that kind of interpretation. Um, if you have a look at some of the text here, you can see I've um, kind of I've put various research along with people's um, sort of oral um, stories as well. I mean, one of the things I found out about is the way in which a kind of mapping of movement, the way in which in um, conventional dances you have the male and female roles and the way in which these are quite clearly sort of um, prescribed. But what you have now is same-sex rumba dancing. You have rumba dancing where people are changing, the leading and the following. And I think this leading and the following in the body is something that's always inherent in, in mapping, whether it's this kind of more conventional A to Z that we see, but actually our body will be really positive in that as well. And the sound piece is um, a version of the rumba dance. It's instructions for you to dance it. So, but it's instructions without kind of um, uh, oral instructions. It's singing, it's kind of stories as well.